Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over a 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah. Oh. Sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. Hi, everybody. It's Sunday. That means it's time for another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi. What's good, Fruit Loop? Uh, I don't, I don't even know. I know. It's, I, honestly. It's been so busy this weekend. Crazy busy. Yep. I've been in front of this computer. Yeah. Just, uh, I'm taking the day off after we do this. Oh, I don't blame <laughs> you. You've been carrying the load. No. Yeah. Uh, So we're going to do two episodes today, mainly because we just had too much. Um, so this episode, we're going to just go over some news and different cases that we've been following and then, uh, go over the witness list. And then the next episode, we're going to cover the, um, Aiden Fucci case, the Tristan Bailey murder, which is just so crazy. It is yeah. such a crazy story. It's terrible. It's crazy to think like when we were kids, we were just playing. Yeah. Like riding your bike. Yeah. Stuff like that. Nowadays, I, this is what kids are doing. Like, I swear, I think the internet has propelled craziness. Yeah. I think it's just contributed to so much bad in our society, but here we are yeah. on it all day, every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, back in our day, if we had problems with somebody, we just put our fists up. Yeah. You just fought in the front yard and then exactly. and we're then friends you, like the next day. Uh, yeah. Sometimes even that same night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So big correction. Um, a lot of our listeners pointed out that Andrea Yates is still in custody. We had said on the previous episode that she was um, released. I remember it's, somebody who drowned their kids was released. Yeah. It's somebody. I just can't think. Either. I can't either. So if you guys know who um, a mother that drowned her kids that was released, uh, let us know because I, I have Googled and I cannot find it. Yeah. I do remember that though. Yeah, so we have Chad's hearing coming up this week, and it's also the one-year anniversary of this podcast. Yeah, it's crazy to think that. It's insane. Um, so what we're going to do that day is we're going to have a, a recorded episode, and then we are planning at about 9 or 10 o'clock Eastern time to go live on YouTube and just do a QA. and a yeah, I think it'll be fun. So we could talk about the cases we've covered over the last year. You guys can ask anything you want, like friendship-wise or anything yeah. um, within reason. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say Don't anything. be getting all crazy. Yeah. Uh, uh, so 6-9, uh, June the 9th for Chad, and then Lori is on the 16th. Okay, so that first podcast, it was brutal, dude. Oh, my gosh. You could go back and probably listen to it. Yeah, it was it was long. It was over two hours, I think. Yeah, we were just following the the breaking news as it came in when they found the kids' bodies and then uh, arrested Chad, which we had been waiting on that for so long. It's it's kind of we forget there was so many months where he was not even in custody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just you know, so much stuff has happened, but I think on the the Wednesday show, we're just gonna mainly just reflect back on the last year. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, so, and, and then we'll have some news about this hearing with Chad. Um, there was an order governing, governing courtroom conduct issue. Don't even start laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> issue for the upcoming hearings. So the good news is they're going to be back in person. In I'm the, loving that. In the courts. Um, Can so, we say no mask? Let's say no mask. Well, Chad doesn't wear them. No, he doesn't, but. I don't care. I mean, Lori does. Right. So I believe she's going to have to to be present on this uh, June 16th, I think. So it's going to be interesting. Um, But then you think you're going to have the families back in the courtroom. Yep. 
it's going to be good. Yeah. Um, so what about PayPal, Fruit Loop? So we've set up a PayPal. Um, we had a ton of people ask, uh, and we talked about it. And first we're like, we don't want to, we just didn't want to go that route. No. But we've had a ton of people ask and we've been sending out stickers and stuff like that. So, uh, you've got that information somewhere, right? Yeah. So like Fruit Loop said, we decided pretty much on day one, we were never going to charge our listeners to participate or to, to hear the show. Um, I mean, there have been times in my life where I've been totally just penny pinching. Yeah. And there were times where I wanted to do stuff and I couldn't. And so we just decided it's, we enjoy doing this and, uh, but it took us a year. <laughs> so we do have a PayPal. If you want to donate, do not feel obligated. Um, don't put yourself in any hard position to do so. No. But it's pretty lies and alibis at gmail.com um, on PayPal if you want to. And we want to give a big thank you to Frederick, Erica, and Debbie, who were the first three to donate. Um, you guys don't know how much we appreciate oh, that. Oh, yeah. Thanks. I mean, it That's does awesome. offset the cost for like stickers and postage. Stamps, and, yeah. Um, all the stuff that we've been buying just to to send out stuff that that we enjoy giving for free. I oh, mean, yeah. I love getting free stuff, so. And I love stickers. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. My, my new Jeep is naked. I just decided <laughs> I'm not going to fill it up with uh the car tattoos like I did my other one. Um but yeah, so So we have a wall now in here. Yeah, exactly. We have a yeah. bumper sticker wall, so it's yeah. just a bunch of stuff on on my, on my side of the of the uh of the room. Yep. And what about the website? So we're going to update all that and put that information on there. I think we're going to add some news, something, right? Something yeah, I think maybe um, two or three interesting news stories that are crime related every day. Uh, we're going to try to work on having a page dedicated to the big cases we've been covering, um, like Valo Daybell, now this Aiden Fucci, and maybe like Orin and Orson West. So, um, We'll have our podcast episodes on there. And so we're just trying to get some ideas of how we want to do it. Um, we'll have a link on there for the PayPal. And then we may try to get some kind of a thing you can fill in to order stickers. Because right now it's a little hard to keep up. It is. With all the different social media sites. And there have been a few where I've responded back and said, come in your way. And then I forget to write down the address. And so we're we're going to try to get some kind of a thing you can fill in and just request it. And the stickers will always be free. Yeah. Yeah. But it is hard because we're on so many levels uh, social media wise. So. Yeah. And I, like we said, you know, it seems like every week the number of comments and interactions we get are going up. And so we're, we're kind of getting buried here, which is fun. And we read everything. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is we've had a lot of requests for T-shirts and coffee mugs and stuff. So we're going to be working on that this week as well. Yeah. And again, don't feel obligated. Um you know, we're going to try to find the, the website that has the, the most cost effective shirts for everybody. So you're not forking out a lot of money. Yeah. But uh, so look for that in the next week, too. We're really excited. I don't even drink coffee. Did I I'm say not, coffee? Yeah. You, well, you said coffee mugs. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. No, I, just, you're good. I blacked out for a minute. <laughs> uh, well, you could put some uh, water in there. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't old enough. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I make up for the both of us. Hold up. Hold, yeah. You drink a lot of coffee. So the other thing that people have asked us is for a mailing address. So why don't you go ahead and give that out, Fruit Loop? Uh, it is P.O. Box 14729, and that's Greenville, South Carolina, 29610. Yeah, so we have people that have just said, hey, I'm going to send you guys something, probably some non-slip socks <laughs> Dude, for me. you're going to get some of sticky socks. <laughs> Maybe some catnip for Sherlock. Yeah. Who, by the way, I woke up last night and he was literally laying across my neck. <laughs> yeah. The cats, I'm telling you, that cat going to smother you. You're not kidding. In my dream, I felt like I was being choked. And I wake up and the cat is literally right across my neck. That's funny. But he's so sweet these days. He is calmer, though. He is such a good cat now. He has not attacked my hand while I have it on the mouse uh, lately. So. Yeah, I know. Just, yeah. All right. So we're just going to do on this one a little bit of news updates on some stuff we've been covering and the witness list. So um, did you see this story about the 14-year-old girl and the 12-year-old boy who were runaways from a children's home? Yeah. Immediately, I said Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. And, and, and it's funny because that's what the media was calling them, too. Yeah. So they were involved in a 30-minute standoff with police in Florida on Tuesday night. 
they used baseball bats to just destroy furniture, toilets, a bathtub, and then they ransacked the home and found the homeowner's guns. Dude, this is this is crazy. What's up with kids these days? I'm telling you, it is insane. Yeah. Um, so they had an AK-47 and a pump action shot or a pump shotgun. I don't know if it's action and a handgun. And they also had 200 rounds of ammunition. Sheesh. Um, so what did they do? Um, so they shot at deputies. Yeah. Um, and I, th- I guess finally the female was shot in the chest. She was. I mean, they opened fire because she's outside kind of. I think she was crouching down either beside the car or the trash can. And I get that she's 14, but she they're shooting at cops. I mean, I think all bets are off in that situation. Yeah. I, I just, I mean, we said at the beginning with that other case, we're getting ready to pick up. Uh, but it, it makes no sense. No. And it was at night, too. So they didn't have, I, you know, I, I mean, every I'm sure that's just scarier at night. Yeah. Because you can't see good. Um, so... She, she had surgery. Yeah. But what kind of charges are they facing? So now they attempt they face attempted first degree murder of law enforcement officers and armed burglary. Um so the I guess the owner wasn't at home. No, the owner was not at home and thank goodness they had run out to do something, but I just don't understand a kid's mind. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of people have said, what is in these kids' past that make them do this? I mean, they were in a children's home. So you never know the history of what these kids have been through. But, you know, in this situation, my way of thinking is there are a lot of kids in children's homes and, and maybe they do run away, but they don't shoot at cops. Yeah. we. You remember that game we used to play? Uh, what was that game called? Cops we, and Robbers? No. Oh. No, on uh, Xbox. It was that game where we, uh, oh, I can't even remember the name of it, where we would go and go in houses and you would like, you hunted each other. Call of Duty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah we yeah. played Nuketown. Yeah, that's what it was, Nuketown. That was so fun. Um, th- That's what it sounds like they it, were doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, if any of you guys play Fallout 76 on PS4, <laughs> uh, shoot me a message with your tag because I'm looking for people to play with. <laughs> by the way, just putting that in there. So it's just crazy. I mean, it's just, you know, th- the story we're doing next on the next episode today is about a teenager. I, it's just... It's crazy. Yeah. I don't know what's up. I don't up. get it. I don't so get it. Uh, the Bakersfield PD gave an update on the Orrin and Orson West case today. What did they say? Or not today. Uh, earlier this week. What did they say? Yeah. So those two boys have been missing since December 1st, 2020. Um, 83 people have been interviewed. Um, 44 search warrants have been executed uh, on residences and electronic devices. Um, 170 items have been seized. There's been 200 tips received, 16 mass searches conducted, three searches done outside of California. Um, the adoptive and biological parents have been interviewed some multiple times. You know, this is so reminiscent in a way of how we were when we didn't know where JJ and Tylee were. Yep. It seems like they vanished into thin air. And that's never the case. They're always somewhere. I just... This is so weird to me. I, I don't, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot going on behind the scenes that, the, that they know that we don't, but it just seems like there's not much progress in answering the question, where are the boys? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's just like, poof, they disappeared. I know. And it. I think the thing for me is just, I, I'm so tired of hearing about these poor kids that are just victims of adults who are just evil yeah they don't fit into their schedule or whatever right yeah. i just yeah. feel like at this point kind of with jj and tiley the more time goes on and these are little boys i just i don't think the outcome is going to be good at all yeah i don't i don't think so either yeah so, so you have uh scott peterson back in the news what's up with that yeah so as you all know this was a probably one of the well susan smith was the first case i really got interested in because it was in our backyard uh, she's the one that, that put her kids in the lake back in, what, I guess the 90s? Yeah, we were in high school, I think. Yeah. Uh, but Scott Peterson was convicted of killing his pregnant wife, Lacey, and their unborn son, Connor, in 2005. So they threw out the death sentence because a potential jurors were excluded after saying they had disagreed with the death penalty. So the option was to retry the penalty phase, kind of like they did with Jody Arias. But ultimately, um, the family said they know that Scott killed 
Lacey and Connor, but th- they just don't want to go through the emotions of another trial. I don't blame them. And I get that. You know, I guess there's some satisfaction in knowing that he had a death sentence, but he's in California and, and they don't regularly execute people on death row. Yeah. It's, it's just, they don't. So I guess avoiding all that drama is a good deal. But here's the thing. Ever since he was convicted back in 2005, he's been on death row, which means he's isolated. So now, I assume he would be put in gen pop and be around everybody else. So it might not be the best thing for Scott. Yeah. These inmates don't like people who are notorious. Yep. And if you have a lifer in there and then get a badge of honor, I just feel like Scott's going to be kind of a what do you call it a fish in a barrel yeah yeah uh, fish yeah yeah uh-huh. i guess <laughs> something like that but fish in it, a bowl, he's gonna know. be a sitting duck yeah for yep. somebody who wants to make a name for themselves look at but you know what i i think i don't like him being secluded i mean you've done what you've done yeah i feel like it's almost like an easy pass it, it, it is, in a way. Um, yeah. I mean... I mean, you're secluded and you don't get to interact with anybody. Yeah, but I, you kind of wonder, too, after all that time, do they welcome being around other people just because they've been alone for a decade, you know, over a decade? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, so, I guess that that's that. Shouldn't hear anything else. I know they were trying to get a new trial at some point, too, um, but they just decided it wasn't going to happen. They yeah. were, I forget what it was, the argument. But so what about Colby? He, he's he got a YouTube channel that you guys definitely need to subscribe to. It's called The Ryan Family. And he's very open on that channel, but he's definitely trying to move away from the case as much as he can. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like their life now and what's going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, he, he says it was a difficult week with the charges, but they don't just they don't want to talk about it on that youtube channel right um so he really did a a a fairly long video about mental health and he was very candid about his struggles with anxiety and um he said that anytime anything comes up about the case that he and kelsey just kind of fall into a pit and i get that oh yeah it's not just that they're dealing with this crazy just huge loss it's also that it's playing out on a world stage yeah and so you're not allowed to grieve in in private and um you know on top of that you have people who are criticizing and questioning your motives when you had nothing to do with it so i I know this has just been such a hard road they do have the new baby coming which is definitely a bright spot in a really bad year and a half yeah i always think when i when i think of some of this um and I've got a friend going through some stuff right now, but um, Pat Summit had a quote, and Pat Summit coached at Tennessee, uh, Tennessee Lady Vols, and she had a quote that was "Left foot, right foot, breathe, repeat." Yeah. And when you're going through something like that, yeah. it's those little things. Pat um, Summit was a legend. Oh yeah, yeah, amazing coach. Uh, yeah. But that that hits home for me. Like yeah. I mean, that's basically how you get through life. Left foot, right foot, breathe, repeat. That's that's so a take really it good, one day at a time. Yeah. And I'm sure that's where they are. Yeah. I mean, they're going to have ups and downs for the rest of their life. I mean, it's going to be really hard to even move on after all this. I oh, mean, yeah. You just have to learn to deal. Yeah. I think in everyday life and survive. Yeah. He says that they're 100% behind the prosecutor in, in this case. And he says at this point, he just puts his trust in God and the prosecutor to get justice for his family. Yeah. So. Um, I, I like, I love them. I do too. I yeah. think they're just very open and they seem like such good young people. I was about to say kids, but they're young people. Um, dude, yeah. we old. I know, dude. Yeah. <laughs> All these people are like, yes, ma'am, uh-huh. ma'am, ma'am. And I'm like, what? Uh, and then I look around and see who they're calling ma'am. And then they're looking at me and I'm like, oh. Yeah, somebody <laughs> called me Miss Looper the other day, and I was like, that's my grandmother. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, ma'am, it's my mama. Hold up. <laughs> um, yeah. So what did Colby talk about on this this episode? So he talked about suffering from anxiety as a kid, which we talked about. Um, but as an adult, due to things in his childhood, panic attacks, bad dreams, etc., cetera, um, he just went on, you know, said some other things. He said he's had it as long as he can remember. Um, he talked about having past trauma and not dealing with it. Yeah, and I, 
you know, I've wondered since all of this has happened with Lori, has it been where he takes stock of his childhood and just, you know, goes through and says maybe this was manipulation by her? Because he, he didn't hide the fact that his childhood was chaotic. Yeah. And I think maybe now as an adult and as a father, you can look back on your childhood and either say, wow, I had it really good and I'm grateful for my parents or man, nothing was ever calm for me. Yeah. And I think that that's maybe where he's at is just realizing that things weren't always good. I was going to say, I'm sure he can look back and see now through things that maybe he thought was a little bit different. Right. Um, And then he's seeing his mom for who she truly is. Right. And it's got to be tough. Yeah. But he also said that Tylee struggled with anxiety. He got very choked up um, when he was mentioning this. And he said that he thinks it was just from a lot of uncertainty as a kid. And we all know what Tylee was put through at a very young age, mainly because Lori just did not want to share Tylee with her dad. Yeah. And you're talking about from a really young age where they're like sponges. And I think a lot of your foundations are laid in your early childhood for who you're going to be as a teenager, adult, elderly, whatever. Most definitely. And and nothing was calm for that child. It's just, it's really sad to look back at everything she was put into. Yeah. And you think about it, she had some health issues. So you wonder, did those, uh, and I know I've got a niece who suffers from anxiety a little bit and she has stomach issues. So Mm -hmm. is that what was causing all that with her? It could be. I mean, uh, you know, mental, uh, struggles manifest physically definitely oh yeah um so it's a good question i know they were never really able to to find the cause of why she was having the pancreatitis or the the problems with her stomach yeah um and that was a big thing was was Lori kind of munchausen by proxy where you take your kid in to get attention Oh, yeah. Um, and, and some people have theorized that, even people that knew her. Yeah. Knew Tylee, especially. And y'all know my, my quote on that movie, that Kindergarten Cop, you ain't never watched it. <laughs> no, have, I yeah, have. You've no, never I watched, watched it, it back in the 90s. It's just, it was one yeah. of those I didn't feel the need to watch again. Yeah. Uh, but I, I guess I still need to, <laughs> so I can get all your little... There you go. That's your, right. Little references. That's right. So one of our listeners who, her name is Jen, she is a licensed clinical social worker and has worked in prisons and state forensic hospitals kind of like the one Lori will be at if she's deemed incompetent and she said through her experience she has told her family if she snaps and does something super crazy make sure she's sentenced to prison and not put in a state-run mental hospital because she said in her experience it is way more miserable than prison Ooh. and she said I do not think Lori will thrive there at Uh all so interesting yeah that's I mean I don't think this is going to go far anyway. I think that maybe even this this hearing on the uh, 16th of this month, I, I, we know Wood's objecting to all this. Yeah. So they're probably going to have their own expert evaluate her. And then like we said on the lap, last episode, it's going to be up to Judge Boyce to decide which professional he believes. Yeah. I, I hope that this is uh, the observer like, a lot. Yes, yes. And they will use any kind of footage they have in the, in the jail. They'll use prison calls that she's made, video visits, anything that might show that she is clear on a lot of things. And you can't just play possum on something you don't want to deal with. Yeah. And I think back to what Summer said in that uh, talk with um, Rob Wood. At some points, you see the old Lori coming through. Yeah. So who knows what all... I mean, they're, they've are heard everything, so... Right, but it's not like they're... I mean, this is so basic, what she has to understand to be deemed competent. I just don't see that she's going to be able to ride this train for very long. Yeah. Um, yeah. They know when they're faking. Yeah, I totally agree. All right, so we promised you guys we would go through this witness list that was... Uh, put out in the legal paperwork for the grand jury yeah and so we're probably going to butcher some names here um and i got this one you got this oh yeah i got this one okay so we're going to go may 17th which was the first day yep so uh ray hermosillo which was the rexburg detective uh he testified the first and last day um of the grand jury 
uh, he testified at the preliminary hearing, if you remember, for Chad. Yeah. Uh, he was there the day the kids' bodies were found. Yeah. He's, I think he's the one that described uh, finding JJ. He did. Yeah. Um, he was on the stand for quite a while. Yeah. And so he, he was there the first and the last day of the grand jury. Um, so then we have Ron Ball, who is the Rexburg with Rexburg Police Department, which he testified that day too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have. Go ahead, uh, Randy Reese, which was or is a detective with Rexburg PD. Dave Stubbs, who is with Rexburg PD. I feel like they're all just um, their purpose is maybe um, the welfare check. Yeah, and then from then on, and then. The day, the you know, up till the day they found the kids' bodies. Yeah, I always think it, it, when they were in the courtroom for Lori's, uh, one of her hearings, it was like some of the first ones when she came back from Hawaii, mm-hmm. all these guys were in there. If you yes. remember, they were sitting right on that front row with Kay and Larry and all them over there. They made their presence known. They it, knew so much at that point that we didn't now, you know, yeah. just so. Yeah, so Joe Powell and Bruce Mattingly both are with the Fremont County Sheriff's Office, they're detectives. They both testified on the first and second day. So, again, this this probably has a lot to do with Tammy Daybell. Yeah. I'm yep. thinking. Yep. Um, or it could be the kids' bodies because they were in Fremont County. Yeah. So, Vinny, uh, who is with Fremont County SWAT team, he testified first and last day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe that was about Chad's arrest. Maybe. Yeah. I, that's that's kind of all unless maybe they had a SWAT team there when they were excavating the backyard. But um, so then we had Rylene Nolan, who is with uh, Idaho state police forensics department lab manager. And then Tara Martinez, who is with the Idaho state police forensics. So I'm assuming maybe the tools that they were testing or they, if you remember in the affidavit, they said that they found something that could be blood in one of the apartments. So um, I think forensics definitely is going to be um, maybe duct tape. We don't know. Yeah. I really want to know whose fingerprints were on that duct tape. I know, right? Remember yeah. we did that little thing with um, yeah. the duct tape and the gloves? It's yeah. impossible. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. No way. So Angela Yancey, which we're thinking maybe a coworker of Tammy. Yep. And then we have Haley Palmer and Taylor Ballard. Both of those are with... Um, Ballard Insurance and their insurance agents, we feel like that is definitely about Tammy's life insurance policy. Oh, yeah. So the next day, May 18th, who we got? Uh, Katie Dace. Yeah, that's um, a lot. It'll probably be like Dachi. I know. <laughs> which is like, what was that word we messed up? Oh. Uh, I don't what, remember. Like, there's a list VJ. of words. Yeah. Yeah. Pro Hoc Vice yeah. and yeah. <laughs> Mooney and. Yeah. Yes. What I say? Uh, oh. Epitome? Yeah. Yeah, the epitome of Mooney. And yeah. <laughs> um, so Katie is a forensic biology supervisor from Idaho State Police. Um, you have Chuck Kunsayatis. Kunsayatis. See, I, I say, yeah, it's close. Chuck, we're sorry. Uh, he's with Rexburg PD. Yep. Mark Sari, who is a social security investigator, obviously, about her fraud. This next one, we're just going to say. Uh, I'm doing it. Go ahead. I, I'm going to try it. Helenia Kayu Akamanyu. Beautiful name. See, it is. I, I, but well, I, just I butchered don't know how, it. Yeah. I probably. love Hawaiian names. Oh, yeah. So pretty. Yeah. Uh, but actually, she is with the uh, Fremont County Sheriff and maybe Lynn Humphrey's assistant. We're not sure. Gotcha. So Fremont County, that's obviously going to be Tammy or where the kids were buried. And then we have uh, Coulter Cannon, who's uh, with the Fremont County Sheriff's Department. Yeah. Then you have uh, Garth Daybell, who is Chad's son. Yeah, big one. And then Joe Murray, who yep. is the husband. Joseph is the husband of Emma Daybell. Uh, which is Chad's daughter. Yep. So then we have Melanie Pulowski, who testified on day two and day four. Oh, um, David Warwick, who uh, is Melanie Gibbs' ex-husband. Uh, he was there the night, uh, the last night JJ was seen. He testified on the second and third day. Then we have Ms. Zulema, who obviously oh. is Alex's ex-wife or wife. That's, or that's what I want to know what she knows. Uh, Alex Cox's widow. Um, she testified on the second and third day and it looks like uh, her testimony was just continued into the next day because she was the last witness and then the first one. So um, looks like she had a long time up on that stand. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I really want to know what I she know, knows. Right? If I could be a fly on the wall once, that's where I would want to listen. Same. Yeah. So jump into May 19th. Um, we have Melanie Gibb and she was only there one day. Yep. Then we had Stephen Daniels and Gary Liu, who both are with the FBI. 
Yep. Uh, Brenda Dye. Uh, she's a medical examiner. Um, we're saying Tammy Daybell's. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, autopsy, I guess. Uh, she testified on day three and the last day. Yeah. Um, Eric Christensen, Utah medical examiner. So I'm thinking maybe that might be in relation to the kids or I don't know. Utah medical examiner. It could be that Tammy Daybell's, I guess, too. But yeah, I believe the FBI was at Tammy's um, her auto- when they exhumed her. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, yeah, we're still curious to find out if they found something in toxicology or th- if they just had to go on digital. Yep. Yep. So, so May 20th, uh, we have Ricky Wright with the FBI. You could so mess that up. Oh, yeah. Ricky that's Wright. a tongue. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. Uh, he's with FBI. Um, yep. Garth Warren is Ada County Coroner. Yep. Then we had Ian Pulowski and uh, Audrey Baratero. She's a Facebook contact of Melanie Gibb and Jason Mao. We're not sure in what capacity she was there in, but she testified on the, the fourth and fifth day. Gotcha. Uh, ben Dean, he is an FBI cell phone analyst. Mm-hmm. And then Lane Kinghorn, who is the director of student living and associate dean of students at BYU. So probably just to verify that Tyler was never a student there or probably never even put in an application. Yep. Yep. Uh, Emma Moss, which uh, we're thinking maybe B- 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 BYU. Yeah. Um, and so that was the one um, and that McKay, uh, Abe, Abe Glenn, I'm not sure. Those are the two that we think maybe are students. They look very young online. Um, maybe students that saw Chad and Lori together. We just don't know. Or they could be associated with the school in some official capacity and, and could verify that tiling never came through there. We just don't know. True. Uh, we have Heather Daybell, which is Chad Daybell's sister-in-law. And we have Sandra Briggs, who is a neighbor of, or was a neighbor of Chad's. Uh, Shanna Miller. Uh, she is Central Elementary staff. Uh, and this is uh, Tammy, Tammy Daybell's colleague. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Ricky Wright, he we, was the first yeah. uh, to testify on May 20th. And he also, they continued his testimony later in that day. Hmm. This, this, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so Jared Wilmore, he works at the jail. Yep. And then the last day we had the 911 dispatcher whose name was Chris. I'm not sure. that may, I'm thinking maybe when Tammy Daybell died. Yep. Um, and then we had Allie Greenhog, Fremont County Sheriff's deputy. Yep, Cammy Wilmore, which is Fremont County EMS. Definitely going to be about Tammy. Yep. And then we have Mike Douglas, who's with the FBI, and Doug Hart, who is with a construction company owner in Utah. Wonder so, if, ooh. Well, if you remember, they went to look at that property when Melanie Gibb was in town. Yep. So I assume maybe they brought him in to, to find out what they were lo- well, what was said, what were they looking for, and who all was there. Was it that, or was it... Remember Chad wanted to put uh, oh, that yeah. um, other, what, trailer or yeah, something? Yeah, he wanted to c- pour like a concrete pad. Yep, yep. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even think about that. That's true. Um, I'm still yep. curious. He may have testified where he wanted to pour that concrete pad, which my theory is going to be probably right over the fire pit. Oh, yeah. Somewhere in yep. one of those two scenes. It seems like uh, that area where the tree is is just so far back on the property. It would... Yeah, I'm curious about that. So that yeah. was all the witnesses. So you just see, um, it, if you look at all these people, it's just a, a good overall summary of probably day one up to where we are now. Yeah, it kind of tells a story a little bit. Yeah, and we know that they didn't give up too, too much, but they probably got a lot of information we don't know yet. So yeah. so that was it for the witness list. Um, and then... That's all we have for this episode. Um, we'll be coming at you in a little while with the uh, Aiden Fucci case and the, the Tristan Bailey murder, which is just like we said, crazy. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, we will see you guys a little bit later today. Uh, have a good rest of your afternoon. Goodbye.